Hey everyone, it's Hunter Foster. I'm the artistic director for the Red House Art Center in Syracuse, New York. And I just want to say hello and thank you for joining us here on Red Talks, which we do every Tuesday night at 6.30. We've been doing it every night since uh, since April. And, um, you know, I've enjoyed putting these things together and I've learned quite a lot about how to produce a TV show now. So uh, I've gone from theater director, theater artistic director to TV producer. So there you go. That's what happens when you're in a pandemic. Anyway, um, thank you for joining us. We've got a great show tonight. It's going to be um, behind the scenes at the Bucks County Playhouse, which is one of my favorite places uh, that I've worked. It's actually where I got my start in New Hope, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's it's home to some legendary people. I mean, legendary actors such as Robert Redford, Ethel Merman performed there, Angela Lansbury, Audra McDonald, uh, you name it. A ton of people uh, work there and call it their home, such as Moss Hart and George Kaufman. So we're going to take um, a little behind the scenes. I was actually down there a couple weeks ago um, directing a Halloween concert. Actually, that's right, Halloween concert that we did. It was the first time that I've directed a show um, since the pandemic, um, probably since Christmas Carol, Syracuse Christmas Carol last December. Uh, we had, it was a, like a 13 um, song concert with some of our favorite actors, uh, Brandy Siobhan Massey, uh, Jeremy Kushner, who was in God of Carnage with us last year, and a new guy that I had not met before, new kid, Andrew Pollock, who was fantastic. He does a lot of meatloaf songs. And uh, yeah, it was great. And so we, we in Pennsylvania, you're allowed to have an audience. Uh, you had up, up to 60 people. In New York, we're still not allowed to have an audience. Even if we wanted to, we could not have um, patrons in the theater to see a show. In Pennsylvania, you can. So they had up to 60 people. We only had about 20 or 30, but still, it was it was great to see people back in the theater. Everyone wore their masks. Everyone got the temperature checks. And, uh, you know, there was that's the world we live in. But it was a great sign that people can actually you know, attend theater and people were excited and they were dancing and singing along. So it, may, it just gives me hope for the future and hope for, for live theater that we're going to come back strong, especially if there's a vaccine, which of course we got great news today that a vaccine is coming out. Um, so we have a great couple of days, man. The weather was fantastic. I was in New York City. I just got back today and I know the weather was here was fantastic. It's what, it's like November 10th and it's, oh my God, it's like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like summer, but it's amazing. It's wonderful. Um, so uh, really, really excited um, for the weather because that made me really, really happy. A couple of great days in New York City. Um, it was great to see New York City sort of come alive again. You know, it's been a tough road for New York City. It's my home. And um, as well as I work in New York, I live in New York City and I also work in Syracuse. So I consider both of them my home. But, um, you know, my my permanent residence in New York City, and I consider, consider myself a New Yorker. And it's just great to see. Um, the city sort of bounced back and become alive again. And it really, really has. My favorite thing are the outdoor seating, which is on the avenue. So if you go up like 8th or 9th Avenue, they've literally built these. Um, at first, they were sort of makeshift. They had like tarps over it. Now they've literally gone up and constructed like these mobile homes that are sitting in the middle of the street. Next time I go to New York, I'm going to take pictures of them because it's really fascinating so you're even when you're driving i was when i was driving there you, you know you, you don't want to veer off because you don't want to plow into one of these things but that's that's the that's the way it is man i mean and they're building them out of like hard structure hard roofs and out of wood and they're, they're like little mobile homes up where you can do outdoor seating basically but then they're, they're sort of closed in so are they outdoor because they're sort of indoor I don't get it. But anyway, but uh, and it, it was a, like I said, it was a great and New York. They, they actually New Yorkers do a great job wearing their masks and um, sort of following rules. So um, please remember to wear your mask and do the things right. And um, actually, we can get through this as quickly as we can. Uh, I want to let everyone know about a couple of things we got coming up. First of all, we have the learning lab. Um, which we've been doing now, um, you know, for, for about five, six weeks. Please check out um, the redhouse.org, our website, where you can get some information about our learning lab for your kids. Um, it's been great. We've got some um, great recreational activities for them, as well as all the stuff that they are doing for school. Uh, there's even like a, a rock wall for them to climb and a little playroom. And, and uh, Peggy Mitchell, uh, who's been who put all this stuff, you know, has put this whole thing together. It's got some great things for the kids to do as well. Some great fun things. So it's it's learning, but it's also fun. So please check that out, the learning lab at theredhouse.org. And also it's a wonderful life. So um, one of the great Christmas stories of all time, right? It's a wonderful life, George Bailey and uh, the story of George Bailey that starred, uh, starred Jimmy Stewart on a classic film. We are doing the live radio play version. That's right. Live radio play version in which um, in the 30s and 40s, obviously, radio plays were like the Netflix, 
You know, that's what, Netflix, you know, you'd sit around the fire and you'd like listen to the radio and you listen to, because there was no television and you listen to these radio plays. And so this is the whole concept is that we are putting this uh, live radio play together in Syracuse back in the thirties and forties. And uh, it is a, um, it's going to be a recreation of It's a Wonderful Life. We are going to videotape it. That's right. We have a three camera video shoot and um, it'll be available to stream. And that'll be for $20 for pre-sale all the way up to December 10th, which is our opening night. And that um, after the December 20th, I'm sorry, December 10th, it'll be $25 and it'll run to December 20th. So if you have a chance from December 10th to December 20th to view It's a Wonderful Life live radio play. It's going to star some great uh, talent from around town. Uh, Benai for Dabu, Stefan Brunson, Peggy Mitchell, Marguerite Mitchell, and uh, Brendan Didio and uh, Robert Edwards, Robert Denzel Edwards, uh, a lot of our favorites, and they're all going to be in the show. So please, please come check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we can't wait to put it all together, which we are going to start rehearsal soon. So really excited about that. So uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the Bucks County Playhouse. Like I said, it's where I got my start as a director. Um, I directed, I don't know how many shows there, and uh, my first show that I ever directed there was a Summer 42 musical, which I actually wrote as well. It was an off-Broadway show back in 2001 that I wrote, and we brought it back. It was my first show there. And then I directed Rocky Horror Show, which we have done for six years running. That's right. We It was, it was a reoccurring show that we did every year. For, for six years, we had to stop this year, obviously, because of uh, the pandemic. But we do hope to bring it back in the future. So Rocky Horror, we did for six years. I've directed other shows there, such as the Buddy Holly Story, Company, 42nd Street, Guys and Dolls, uh, to name a few. So um, and I have to thank Jed Bernstein, who was the uh, producer, producing director who brought me in and sort of gave me my start. So I wouldn't be here at uh, Red House if I hadn't started at the Bucks County Playhouse. So thank you, Bucks County. OK, so we are going to take you backstage uh, at the Bucks County Playhouse. Again, the historic Bucks County Playhouse. Okay, so we're backstage looking around the, the um, this is actually the lobby. Um, actually, it's not set up for a show right now because um, even though we will be doing a show tonight, we're gonna have about 13 tickets sold. Ah, and uh, this is the lobby. And here's some, actually some pictures, archival pictures. This was Guys and Dolls um, with Steve Rosen and Leslie Margarita that I directed here a few years ago. We have a little picture on the wall. This is another picture. Angela Lansbury performed here at the Bucks County Playhouse and Affairs of State. As you can see right here, this was a while ago, but that's kind of cool. Angela Lansbury, Bucks County Playhouse. And this is with Ruth White, Jack Klugman, and Ronald Helfer, which is kind of cool. I love these old posters. Bucks County Playhouse with Jack Klugman, who was Quincy. Another one, Kay Francis in Mirror, Mirror, prior, prior to Broadway. How about that? Right there, Bucks County Playhouse. Another one. Here is... Arthur Godfrey in Our Town and Alan Alda, let me get the picture out, the light out of the way. 
Alan Alda in Sunday in New York. Bucks County Playhouse, isn't that cool? Okay, so we're here with Ron Otero, Broadway choreographer, and um, also an artistic associate at Bucks County, um, as well as myself. And so just tell us a little bit how you got started with uh, the Bucks County Playhouse. Well, the first show we did here was way back when it reopened and Jed Bernstein was running it. And um, Lonnie Price and I did the first show. We did Grand Night for Singing, which is a Rodgers and Hammerstein review. And that's how it started. And then I think you and I, quite quickly thereafter, I think we did the second show, which was Summer 42. Probably, yeah. Is that right? 34, summer 42. That summer. And, yeah. um, and then we did, or we did Rocky Horror also yeah right and um so very early on we did those and then uh jed moved forward onto other things and um alex frazier and robin goodman and josh fielder came in and took over the playhouse and luckily um kept us on as artistic associates and then we just sort of opened up the gamut and we got to do company and buddy and we did a new play called a national pastime in a musical mm -hmm. we did ain't misbehaving we added dancers to it which was always my fantasy as a young girl watching it um what's your favorite thing about bucks county or coming to new hope i well the town of new hope is full of people who are so eclectic and different and you know it's got everything right it's got a huge lgbtq community it's got Die-hard Democrats, die-hard Republicans. Um, it's got drag nights every Sunday. It's got a motorcycle, a group of motorcycle riders who come here on the weekends. Hundred, the town is like all you know motorcycle gangs, and they all come to the theater, and that's what the theater does. It like brings everybody together. So it's a really special town. Now you've had a, uh, quite a, um, a extensive Broadway career as a performer, as an associate, and as a choreographer. And um, um, go, just tell us a little bit about your Broadway credits, your recent Broadway credits, which included Waitress, which we know is like a yes. people just love uh, that show. Yeah, well, Waitress was on Broadway for four years and in London and a tour. And hopefully we're going to Japan in January and Australia in the spring. Fingers crossed it all continues to move forward. Um, it was an awesome experience, and now I'm working on Mrs. Doubtfire, and the, we were doing, we were in our fourth preview when we shut down due to COVID. Uh, we will be back, and uh, it's a beautiful show, I can't wait for people to see it. And The Visitor at the Public, which the set is also on the stage, we were about to walk into tech. Another beautiful show. Uh, what's it like being back in the theater? I know both of us, we talked about it, sort of being back in tech. What's it like? What's it feel like after this such oh a long layoff? Oh my gosh, when the singers started to sing, and these singers aren't incredible, the hair on my arms just stood up. It was like, I finally felt whole again for the first time since March. Um, and you could see the singers on stage. You could watch them almost expand back to their full being. into the, to regional theaters or to older theaters that have such a sense of history um, as, and especially a theater like Bucks County which has such a sense of history and in this area um, with Rogers uh, with uh, Oscar Hammerstein um, uh, Moss Hart and George Kaufman I mean what's it like to sort of be in it I always feel it I every time I even the Cape Playhouse or here that you get a sense that you know even there's an aura even in when you walk in here that you feel like it, these incredible people were before you. I mean, what's it like to sort of continue on to create theater knowing that you're sort of 
working in the same space as, as such as these theatrical legends. Yeah, it's a sense of responsibility, isn't it? I mean, there's a sense that it is my duty to continue doing this, and to and I've learned from all of these amazing people who learn from all of these amazing people who learn from them, you know, and, and you you know these ghosts that are walk among us. And we have a responsibility to continue this tradition and to teach others and to pass it on so that we become the ghosts on the wall one day. Grace Kelly was here as well, and uh, I was told that she was an usher here at some point. But Grace Kelly, picture Grace Kelly at the Bucks County Playhouse. Like I said, here's Robert Redford, who was seated right there, who also performed at the Bucks County Playhouse. Here's Ethel Merman, who was at the Bucks, picture from at the Bucks County Playhouse. I'm not sure what she did here. We'll ask Alex. But this is Ethel Merman, the Bucks County Playhouse, which is cool. Right there. Here's Dick Van Dyke. How about that? Dick Van Dyke in a play here. So a lot of great stars. Dick Van Dyke, Robert Redford, Ethel Merman, Grace Kelly. A lot of great stars here. Right there. So this is uh, Tom Watson, who's our technical director at the Bucks County Playhouse, who's been here for about six years, and we've done, I don't know how many shows together. Countless. Countless number of shows together. And you guys make a great team, you and Matt. Uh, Matt Given is our production manager, and, and Tom is our technical director. Um, so what's it like being back in the space, doing a, doing a show? It, it, really, it really is a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, I think that, you know, when, when everything closed down, we were about to open the, the biggest, hardest, most technologically advanced show we have ever made and uh, I remember telling everyone that week for, for all our tech crew for everyone here that you know we're here we're growing we're doing bigger things and it's been such an incredible experience to be uh, here from uh, the first show that I worked on here was was with Hunter uh, and the, that experience versus this last show we were about to open before everyone shut down has just been, it, it's been wonderful to experience this growth of, of Bucks County Playhouse and to be a huge part of the team responsible for that. And I, I really can't wait <laughs> till everyone is back here and we get to continue that growth. We get to keep sharing our work with, with everyone and I, I just, the sooner the better. Uh, we're yeah. all really waiting to to be home, and yep. home away from home. Absolutely, and we thank you for the the, the Foley stuff, which I have to put, <laughs> which I do have to put in my car because I've got to take it back to Syracuse. You give you a hand with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Tom. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you.
<laughs> well, it's Alex Fraser, who is the uh, producing director at the Bucks County Playhouse, the historic Bucks County Playhouse. And uh, I was just in the back look, doing, looking at all those pictures and all those people who have worked here. It's and amazing. It's, it's amazing. Um, Robert Redford yeah. and um, Jack Klugman, who was a Quincy, who I, you know, it goes, the list goes on and on. Angela Lansbury, Grace Kelly. Everybody. Yeah. Right here. I know. Well, wait, well, so uh, just tell us how you got, when you began and, you know, how you got associated with the Bucks County Playhouse. So I started in 2014. I had been working in New York theater since 1979 when I graduated from college. And uh, I kind of, uh, I came to a point where I, I wasn't sure what the next step was going to be. And um, I met this guy who didn't, when we wanted to live together, but not in New York. And it means I'd have to leave New York. And Bucks County Playhouse suddenly kind of came up as looking for somebody to replace Jed Bernstein when he went to Lincoln Center. And it seemed, it was agreeable to Peter and it was rural enough that it was a, you know, non-city experience, but it was close enough to the city where I didn't feel like I was um, deserting all my friends. And you're such a, uh, knowing you over, these, over the years, you're such a great lover of the history of theater, of theater in general. And uh, what's, I mean, it's, I think it's, incredibly um what i love about this place is the history and knowing all the great people that worked here but also this was their sort of creative home like moss hart george kaufman yeah. oscar Hammond, all these yeah. people from this i mean what's it like to sort of be associated with a theater that has such a rich history when robin and i first started and i dragged my friend robin goodman to come and do this with me because uh first of all i didn't know anybody down here and i didn't want to do it alone and i didn't want to be alone so um i talked her into doing it with me um, and uh, we got a tour. The Michener Museum in Doylestown was doing a, a, a show at the museum about the 75 years at Bucks County Playhouse. And we really didn't, I mean, we knew about Bucks County Playhouse, but we didn't really know all the details. And we, so David, who was the curator, gave us a tour of it, David Leopold. Leopold. And at the end of it, we were so overwhelmed because we had no idea. We knew it was big shoes. We didn't realize how big those shoes were. And, um, you know, because in the old days, the Broadway theaters would close down in the summer because they didn't have air conditioning. And the stars would pack up their costumes, do the same plays with their family playing the other parts so they could see their family and barnstorm the East Coast playing all of these great theaters, Westport and the Cape and mm -hmm. Gunkwit and Tappan Zee and um, uh, uh, the one in the Poconos. Um, and it was really the thing and all the Hollywood stars would do it. And, um, you know, that was kind of lost in when air conditioning came in in the sixties and suddenly, I mean, shows never ran more than a season. So suddenly you had long running shows. So people weren't available in the summer and, um, that kind of died out. And it's been, uh, the thing I've been most excited about is kind of reviving that idea and getting people from Broadway and Hollywood to come here, do classics, do new work, have fun, do really kind of classy small productions that um, shed new light on plays that people have forgotten. Yeah, right. and um, so tonight is actually a very special night for all of us who've been a part of the Bucks County Playhouse because we're doing our, we, we're, we had rehearsals, we're back in tech, and what does it mean to be able to put a show on um, safely that, that we're doing it, we're doing this safely and uh, we're streaming it, and we have a small, tiny audience yeah, that's going to be socially yeah, distanced. Yeah. But what? How meaningful is? I know it's been meaningful to me and Lauren, but how meaningful is it for you, as the leader of this, um, you know, theater organization, to be able to to get back into the theater and produce a show? Well, you know, it was interesting. I've been raising a lot of money over the past few months to keep us going. Um, we have a campaign that's going to keep us going to the end of May, and next summer we're planning on um, putting a circus tent up and performing outdoors. Um, but uh, I was at a donor's house about two months ago, and he was talking about going to church. And I was like, you can go to church? And he said, oh, we've been going to church since like the beginning of July. And I thought, well, why can you go to church, but you can't go in a theater? And so I really went to this state and said, guys, well, what's the difference here? What's the difference between a church and a theater? I mean, if, if I can socially distance backstage and I can have a small enough cast, and everybody's wearing a mask inside and we have no intermission and I can create just as safe as atmosphere in the theater that you would have in a church or to me safer than a grocery store. 
I know we can provide a safe place to be able to gather again. And I think that's the important thing is we just got to keep going and we've got to get some semblance of the new normal back in here so we can start build on that. Right. Well, we hope you enjoyed um, our sort of backstage at the Bucks County Playhouse. Again, one of my favorite places. And uh, it's a really, really beautiful place. It's in New Hope, Pennsylvania. It's um, right on the Delaware River, as you can see, um, across from Lambertville, New Jersey. And it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful place. If you ever have a chance to go down there, please, please do. And please go see shows once, once they get back up and running. Um, and if you have a chance to go down there, please check out the theater and please go see something. Uh, all the theaters need help. And we love, we love uh, your support for, for everyone. So, uh, so again, like I said, you have an opportunity to um, donate if you'd like. I'm going to put the little donate button up there right now um, to uh, the redhouse.org. Please go on our website. Any donation we will take because um, we have to get through this gap. You know, we are um, obviously we can't do the things we want to do. So we're, we're, we're trying to figure out how we're going to sustain ourselves until we get to a chance where we can actually do theater again. We're hoping for a stimulus package, obviously, from the government. And we will see what happens. Uh, it was a crazy week, obviously, with the election. And we do hope that uh, we have a better future ahead. And uh, we will see what happens. And hopefully um, when everyone gets together and, and we can have a stimulus package that will help um, support the theater. But in the meantime, we do would love your support. So please check out the redhouse.org and make a donation today. Any donation will do. Um, and just a reminder that It's a Wonderful Life, the, the radio play, the live radio play, will open on December 10th and run through December 20th. So please come check that out. Um, again, it's one of our, um, uh, I'm so excited to, to be directing again and getting back in the space with, with some great Red House favorites. Um, check it out. It's going to stream from the 10th through the 20th. Tickets are only $20 right now. If you go on the redhouse.org and buy a ticket now, it's only $20 after December 10th. 10th, it's $25. So um, it's best to get in early, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to have a special, uh, another special Red Talks next week, and we will just check back and you'll get some information about what that will be. And uh, we hope to see you every week at 6.30 on Tuesday nights for Red Talks. Be safe, wear your mask, and have a great night. <laughs>